Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at King Ghidorah, the monstrous three-headed dragon from the Godzilla and Mothra kaiju movies. First debuting in 1964's Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, this creature has become so iconic to kaiju movies that it is no wonder so many comments have asked to see a creature like this one. So let's go and see what it would be like as a real living animal. Also, if you're enjoying our videos, please consider supporting the channel on Ko-fi, link available in the video's description. And, as always, I will be giving some design and biology notes at the end, so please stay if that is something that interests you. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Many decades ago, the entire scientific community was thrown into disarray by a discovery that nothing short of an alien invasion could equal a gigantic form moving across the celestial heavens, a winged monstrous body flying through the vacuum of space. After many observations and analyses were made, two conclusions were unavoidable. Yes, this thing was alive, and yes, it was shaped like an enormous three-headed dragon. While it was considered inappropriate to give this creature a binomial or scientific name, Given its lack of relation to our planet's evolutionary history, this creature has been dubbed as Monster Zero by some of the more dramatic researchers that discovered it, and King Ghidorah by the even more dramatic ones. As technology advanced, we could finally survey this creature in a way that was never possible before, and so we were able to understand how such a creature lives to an amazing degree of detail. First of all, the three heads of King Ghidorah are not really complete heads. While these do contain the creature's sensing and feeding organs, showing a tendency similar to the cephalization seen in animals from our own world, they do not contain an equivalent for an individual neural center in each head. Even for an alien creature, separating the capacity for processing sensory information in such a manner could be counterproductive potentially leading to critical discrepancies in perception or delays in the transfer of such information between heads, be it through a neural network or through communication between them. Instead, the equivalent of a brain is located in the area we would most likely consider the chest, and from there connects to the three heads, also meaning the loss of one or even two of the heads will not prove fatal to this creature. The first of these heads is already present at birth, connected to the body through a much shorter neck. As it develops, the other two heads will emerge and their necks will grow into their adult dimensions. Free of the constraints of gravity, the Ghidorah can grow in excess of 100 meters or well over 300 feet in length. This enormous creature travels through the vacuum of space thanks to a few adaptations, the first one being their enormous solar sails, the wing-like structures at their sides. These solar sails will use the momentum of photons from nearby stars to propel the Ghidorah forward in a slow but very energy-efficient way. As they fly, the Ghidorahs will move their wings as a way to adjust their angle to better reflect light. The second of these adaptations aids them in a much more energy-costly, but faster type of locomotion. They will expel gaseous residual matter from their body through special conducts lining its surface, giving them a lot of thrust. Even smaller amounts of thrust will be enough to propel the Ghidorah along the vastness of space unimpeded. Where they obtain the materials necessary for this process, however, is another matter entirely. You see, life in the vacuum is not as easy to find as it is on Earth, or other planetary surfaces, for that matter. Therefore, Ghidorahs had to find a different source of nourishment. Comets. Ghidorahs will latch onto comets using the four tentacles located on its backside 
equipped with sharp claws that help it hold on. Ghidorahs do not need to stop the comet or change its path, merely hanging on to it as they feed. While it may sound far-fetched, comets do contain many elements common to life on our planet, including carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen, making the composition of Ghidorahs themselves quite similar, in some aspects, to our own. However, their cellular structure is crystalline and free of liquid, allowing them to survive the cold of space. It is by incorporating these elements that the Ghidorah grows and maintains its body, replacing damaged components as it does, as well as obtaining energy through a process analogous to our own respiration. However, these elements are not the only component of comets that Ghidorahs exploit. Comets are also full of metals and silicates that are incorporated to the Ghidorah's body, both lining its outer body as an armor, giving it its shining golden color, and stored in special deposits inside of it. These deposits of metal inside the Ghidorah's body are the source of a variety of abilities that help the creature survive. By applying a current produced by an organ analogous to that of electric eels of our planet, Ghidorahs can generate strong electromagnetic fields around their body, which help them repel space debris that may otherwise hurt them or their very delicate solar cells. While this has not been observed so far, it is believed this field could also help them levitate on the atmosphere of certain planets, where its usual methods of locomotion might not be as effective. The crystalline structure of its cells allows it to form an inorganic protective layer outside of its body, which is very useful during long travels. Whenever the Ghidorah nears starvation, it will cover its body with such a layer and use the last of its energies to propel itself forward, essentially transforming itself into a living meteorite. Inside the protective covering, the Ghidorah will remain in a state of dormancy, safe from all external threats, including space debris and even attacks from other Ghidorahs. In such a state it will wait until it senses tell it a comet is nearby. When it finds an appropriate meal, the protective layer will thin and be reabsorbed by the Ghidorah's body, freeing it once more. By using specially modulated electromagnetic waves, the Ghidorahs can sense the presence of others of their species and communicate with them. While this type of communication is inaudible to us, given the lack of air molecules to actually produce sound, by artificially translating these electromagnetic waves into sound, scientists have been able to hear an approximation to the voice of the Ghidorahs, which sounds like eerie, high-pitched bells. While these communications can be used to initiate mating, it more than usually has to do with both Ghidorahs feeling the other is too close for comfort. While not exactly rare, the dependency of Ghidorahs on comets means they have to take advantage of every chance to feed, even in the face of other Ghidorahs. This means, whenever there is food on the line, Ghidorahs will react with extreme aggression to the presence of others. Ghidorahs will instantly display their bodies, extending their necks and wings to look as big as possible, and even use a special weapon they reserve for only such occasions. Ghidorahs will generate electricity with their special organs, and amplify it using winding metal coils that run the length of their necks, to shoot electric discharges at their opponent. While not immediately lethal to each other due to their particular physiology, the heat produced by this weapon can harm and even severely damage their bodies. When up close, the Ghidorahs will not use their electric weapon, as in proximity it can harm both combatants. Instead, they will bite at each other or use their long necks to wrestle each other into submission. However, they will still not fight if the risk is too high. Should any of the two decide at any point of the confrontation that their opponent is too strong for them, Ghidorahs will turn tail and escape with their lives in order to fight and feed another day.
And that's it for a speculative biology look into King Ghidorah. And yes, this episode also marks a new first on our channel. Our first extraterrestrial being. Lots of comments have asked for alien beings to be featured on the show, and, in general, I was torn on whether doing them as terrestrial creatures or as alien creatures evolved from a completely different ecosystem and evolutionary history than anything on our world. In the end, I decided to go big and make our first extraterrestrial not only a kaiju, but one that evolved to survive in the vacuum of space. This, of course, required me to think of a viable source of nourishment and a somewhat feasible way to move and act, given that wings and legs would be of little use in a vacuum. Incidentally, while working on this video, two things came to my attention regarding King Ghidorah. The first one is how, in modern media, such as King of the Monsters and Godzilla the Planet Eater, Ghidorah tends to be considered the ultimate monstrosity the end-all kaiju, the one that means destruction for everything, when in reality it is quite defeatable, and even turned tail a couple of times when things got rough. The second is the creature's gravity beams, which, for most of its history, have had close to nothing to do with gravity, unless you count the gravity of the situation any time it shoots them. But hey, it sounds cool, right? And sometimes that's enough. All in all, this was a fun episode to work on. With this being our first ever alien creature, I wanted to make it as weird as I could without making it too unrecognizable as an animal. Or as an animal-like creature. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And remember, if there's any type of creature you would like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.